Okay, in this video, I am gonna talk about this website that is called Graph Free. So this is a video that's more for um, teachers, I guess, or professors, or anyone who really needs to put a graph in something. Um, and so I'm in no way affiliated with this website. I'm just gonna talk about it because I think it's pretty great. Um, and uh, I'm gonna like, I guess kind of review it, but also just demonstrate what I would use it for. So it's graphfree.com, um, you're gonna go there. You can take a look on the, the front page of just like some of the stuff that it can do, which all looks really good to me, including uh, number lines, which are really hard to do. Um, this is a nice looking polar curve, it does slope field. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, so to use it is, is very straightforward, I think. Um, so I click on make a graph, and this is kind of the default that you're gonna see. Uh, I found everything really self-explanatory. If you have a question about what to do, uh, there's a read the guide up here, which you can click. Um, and on this column here, it tells you a lot of the stuff you can do and how you can do it. Um, but I'm just gonna go for it, right? So, um, all right, so uh, I'm gonna leave this the way that it looks right now. So like you can click plot dimensions. Uh, this is like the size of the image that you're creating. So 400 to 400 seems good to me, but like 600. 600 is just bigger. Um, so I'm gonna leave this the way that it is, close this window um, and and kind of like keep going. So uh, I'm gonna skip axes and grid right now um, and go to plot number one, just to like see what's going on. So unused is if you've already got stuff here and you don't want it to graph. Uh, function, asymptote, implicit is great polar, parametric, you can just see there's so many options here. Um, I'm gonna choose uh, just function, which I think is what most people will graph most of the time. And I'm gonna type in sine of x and just press enter um, and look. let's see what it looks like. So you can see, I mean, because of the window that it currently has, you're not seeing a lot. I don't really like arrows at the end of things. I don't know why, I just don't. So uh, arrows at graph edges, no, and they're gone. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, let's change the window a little bit, right? So uh, I'm now gonna go to axes and grid. So I like to graph a function first, see what it looks like, and then go to this. So you can see we got Cartesian, Cartesian trig, which I'm just gonna click and see what happens. And there you go, like this is copy pasteable right now if, if that's what you wanted to. I'm gonna choose to modify this a little bit, um, but you can see the way that it currently is, it's doing multiples of pi. I mean, it's like everything you would want it to be. So if we wanna go negative two pi to two pi, just make this negative two pi to two pi, uh, press enter, and then maybe grid lines, I don't know, pi over two. Um, it's just great. Uh, so it's doing all these things. If we want, uh, this is mentioned on the um, read the guide page, I guess. Uh, it does exactly the maximums and minimums here. So like if you are copying and pasting, maybe you wanna like change that a little bit. Uh, so, I mean, this, you end up doing this no matter what you're using, right? Like as a math teacher, you end up making a lot of graphs. You spend a lot of time formatting these things. This is what I really like about this is that it's kind of quick. Um, okay, so there you go. Like that's a great looking graph. Maybe I want to go back to Cartesian and play around with this a little bit, right? So viewing region, um, I'm going to change this so that I go negative four, just hit tab and you bounce between them Four, uh, tab, tab. Uh, I'm gonna go negative four to four here also. So one thing I do, I like to keep things uh, like square so that a square looks like a square, I guess, basically with the grid lines. Um, it does say if, if you don't want grid lines or labels, just leave uh, the spacing uh, you want to skip blank. So like say we don't want those, let's just get rid of that and get rid of that. And there you go, now they're gone. Um, I'm gonna put them back in because I don't want them to not be there. Uh, but again, it's all about like how you can uh, modify these things. And it's really nice. So there's a graph of sine. I don't know, pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna go to plot two so I can add another thing. So maybe I will close this, right? Because it it's just a question of like scrolling, I guess at this point, like here, if I close this, I can modify this. Oh, I didn't notice that before. It's telling me that sine is what's here. That's nice. Uh, here, I'm gonna choose implicit because I wanna graph a circle at the same time. So implicit, do x squared plus y squared is, I guess, two. And there we go, we have our circle, we have our uh, trig function. It's not finding intersection points, but it's not really the point of this. The point of this is like to create a graph that you can put into a document 
so your students can you know look at it on a quiz or in your notes or whatever you're doing um super easy to use uh the next thing i want to do so this is like for calculus teachers and and i think the main thing that i would use this for really is uh, I want to shade a region, right? So say I want to shade this region, so like below the sine curve, but inside the circle. So what I really like about this is um, I'm going to go down uh, to shading and click here and region to shade. So all you have to do is put a point that's in the region. So uh, I guess 0.5, negative 0.5 is definitely in the region that I want to shade. So I'm gonna type in that ordered pair. So 0.5, negative 0.5, and I'm gonna press enter. And look at that, it just shades it. Uh, so this is kind of amazing uh, and I love it. And it basically treats shading the way that like Microsoft Paint treats it, right? You like click in a spot and it will just shade in that region. You don't have to like work out the intersection points or anything like that. You do have to make sure you're clearly in the region I ran into that with um, some polar things that I did uh, for another video that I'm gonna create, um, but it's fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna change the window again, right? Because there's like a lot of white space here. So I'm gonna go back to uh, axes and grid. And I think I'm just gonna update this to be negative two to two, tab tab, negative two to two. And there you go. I mean, that looks fantastic. Uh, so it's, it's way easier to use than other things that I've used for, for these purposes, right? Because it's not overdoing it, it's not doing the math, it's just creating the graph. And that's honestly all I really need in most cases when I'm like making a quiz or writing up some notes or, or anything. Uh, I'm gonna turn these off. So I'm gonna click here to unused so it doesn't do it. And you can see then it shades the entire region. Like it's, it's always trying to do what you asked it to do. And then uh, I'm gonna unuse this. Now it's shading the entire plane, uh, which isn't really what I want, but that's okay because I'm gonna try something else. So I'm gonna go down here to plot three. I'm gonna choose polar. So if you teach calc BC or calc two, you probably know that uh, shading polar regions is like a nightmare. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna do two minus four sine of, now we have to type theta. Uh, I sometimes type T. If you do that, it just turns red, kind of like it's angry. Uh, and then you're like, oh yeah, it's gotta be theta. Okay, so we have this. Um, and you can see that it's already shaded in the region, uh, the, the inner loop, that's amazing. Uh, I do, however, I think want to uh, change the window here. So I do have a, a, I don't know if it's a tip, I guess it's a tip. Uh, it looks better to me if you keep it so that like your, your range of X's and your range of Y's are the same. Um, so for example, I'm gonna go negative four to four for X, which means for X, I've gone eight total units. So I wanna to try to do the same thing for Y. So for Y, I'm gonna to choose to go uh, negative seven, and then I want it to be like eight wide, I guess, in the vertical, eight, yeah, in the vertical direction. I was thinking wide sounds weird there, but it, as soon as you do that, it just looks better. Um, but look at this thing, this is amazing. Um, this is really hard to do on other things to get a, a nice shaded region. Say we want to shade the other region. I'm going to minimize this. Uh, I don't really need to see this, so I guess I'll do that. Um, and then in shading, I want to shade uh, like between the loops, basically. So I'm going to choose a point uh, 0, negative 3, which is definitely in that region. So let's go 0, negative 3, press Enter. It's just amazing. Uh, I, could, I couldn't recommend this enough. If, if you deal with this, I deal with this a lot. If you find yourself dealing with this, uh, this is the way to go, I think. Uh, I'm gonna add another polar graph to this. So polar, they don't have to be polar. It could be any other thing and it just will deal with it, but I'm gonna just add uh, three, right? So a circle radius three. Uh, so right now, uh, why is it not shading anything? I guess there just is nothing that's bounded by both of these. Oh no, you know what it is? Zero negative three is not in a region it, it like is on the circle right so i want to try to shade uh this region here so i'm gonna do zero negative 2.5 i think so let's try that zero negative 2.5 so you do have to know a point that's in the region you're trying to shade but like look at that uh i really struggle to like describe these regions to students 
Um, and then, you know, in class, we'll like shave them in by hand or whatever. But like now I can just create these. Kind of makes me want to go back and redo some of my notes with these kinds of graphs in them. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. Uh, but it's pretty fantastic. If I had one criticism, it's not really a criticism, it's more like a feature request, it would probably be, and maybe you can do this and I just haven't figured it out yet. It would probably be, I would like to change the color of the axes. Um, like I can change the grid line color. Now the reason I would want to change the color of the axes is that I copy and paste frequently into uh, videos that are going to have a black background. And when I do that, I have two choices. So let me show you uh, here in, let's get rid of this, uh, general appearance and accessibility. You can make the background white, which is what I have to do, because if I make it transparent, then when I paste this into a document with a black background, the axes and the graph, you can change the color of the graph. That's not a problem. Uh, for example, I don't know, red. There you go, now it's red. You can change the color of the shading as well. Um, here, uh, let's make it green. So that's not an issue, but when I paste this into a black document, uh, the grid's just gone, the axes are gone. Um, so that would be like my one big feature request, I guess. Um, but let me just show you really quickly one last thing. Uh, at this point, you can uh, just, I'm right clicking on it and I'm just gonna copy the image. And then I'm going to go to a uh, word, a new word document, and I'm going to paste it. And there you go. That's, that's all it takes. Um, let me go back and uh, what am I using here? Let's go back here. I'm going to make it transparent just to like show you what that looks like. I mean, I'm sure you know. You can also download the image, which is what I do when I put them in like onto my iPad. Um, that would be save image as. So I'm going to copy the image and I'm going to go back to this and just with transparent. So it's like not obvious what's going on here with a transparent background, uh, but it is transparent. So if I changed, I don't know, do I know how to do that? Uh, design maybe page color black. You can see the issue with the, the axes there. They're just gone, but like the rest of the graph is there. It's, it's fantastic, uh, highly recommended. I just wanted to let people know that this exists because I had never really heard of it until recently. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you if you use it, I think it'd be worth donating a little bit of money or whatever you could afford or think is worth it. Uh, and uh, yeah, five out of five uh, math teacher tool. So that's the video. Uh, I hope this was helpful and good luck.